Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel. You know, I don't think I've done a favourites video for quite a while and it struck me when I was using a Guerlain product that you can see in the picture uh, that I have been really enjoying uh, for the past few weeks since I got it that there were a couple of products that I hadn't really talked about on the channel because they hadn't featured in a makeup haul or anything like that or they had featured and I haven't talked about them again since. So I thought August would be a good month to do my favourites. So let's um, go straight in with this one, which um, provoked me to um, think about doing this video. And this is a completely new product to me. I'm not entirely sure why I even got it. I think I saw, I can remember actually now, I saw a um, natural makeup routine by a French model for French Vogue, in fact, in French, if you please, um, where very typically for a, a French um, makeover demonstration, most of the video was actually about skincare and she used this product and uh, I believe the eye serum. Uh, of course, she looked absolutely fantastic. Why would she not? She was a model, but uh, I was very taken with this product. It is the Guerlain Abbe Royale uh, Youth Watery Oil, and I'd never heard of it before. I was vaguely aware of this honey line from, well, at least I think it's a honey based line. It's got the famous B um, of Guerlain on the bottle. Uh, there was an offer on at Feel Unique. So although it's an expensive product, it was a bit cheaper than it usually is. I'm doing this gentle up and down to dislodge so that you can see them, the little bubbles of whatever goodness this is supposed to contain. Um, and what you do is you just take a couple of drops and uh, smooth it onto your skin. I think it's meant to be used a bit like a serum. It doesn't feel entirely like a serum, nor does it feel entirely like an oil. It's definitely a watery oil. That's a, a good description. But my skin absolutely laps it up and immediately looks um, really kind of rested and refreshed. It feels fantastic on the skin when you apply it. So I've actually been using it some evenings uh, on its own after cleansing and toning so no moisturizer on top just a decent layer of this and it's not at all greasy um sometimes i've been putting a uh, leaving it for a few minutes after i've applied it in the evening and then putting on um a night cream and i've also been using it effectively as a sort of primer um under makeup and i thought uh, it might not work for that and makeup might not adhere too well. But certainly um, my Chanel Sublimage foundation, which I'll come to in a moment, works absolutely fine with it. And this works as quite a nice primer as well. So uh, I'm absolutely loving it. I'm really tempted, as I always am when I find one product that I really like, to go completely overboard and buy the whole rest of the range. It's a big range. I'm definitely interested in the eye serum, which was the other product that um, this video used. If any of you have um, used the uh, Abbey Royale Guerlain eye serum, um, please leave me a comment and tell me what it's like because I'm thinking about that. I'm also thinking about the serum, although I'm kind of holding off because I'm not sure entirely what a serum would add to this. Um, I'm a, I'm a bit dubious about some serums anyway. It seems an excuse to charge a lot of money. But really, really liking that product. Definitely a big favourite. I'm also in a kind of tricky position with my skincare routines because, for example, I got that and started using it. Uh, I've still got the Barbara Storm um, complete routine that I bought, that I've used largely when I've been away a couple of times since pandemic restrictions lifted a bit this year. Um, so I haven't finished using that, but I kind of feel when I'm using it, I've got to use it all together. I've got um, a whole kind of votary set of 
skincare products that all came with different gifts, which I feel I ought to use together. And I've also got a whole Sunday Riley set of skincare products, as well as assorted oddments. And I just don't seem to get to one consistent skincare routine. I don't know if that's a bad thing or not. People tend to say you should use one consistent routine, even if it's not all products from the same range. But I don't know if that's, you know, to make you buy buy more. Anyway, um, that's a long introduction to this product, which is a Sunday Riley cream. Again, this was very generous because it's a full size gift with purchase with other items, I think from Cult Beauty, or it will have been Space NK, if not Cult Beauty, when I um, get those big boxes of uh, extra gifts with a big spend. I like quite a few of the Sunday Riley products. Um, I love their AHA, which the name of which I, Good Jeans, um, although they have reformulated it. That was the first product of theirs I ever had. They then had a kind of nourishing night lotion, which they discontinued, although I have um, plentiful stocks because <laughs> I was so horrified when they discontinued, I bought up. I hadn't tried this one, which is a vitamin C rich hydration cream. Um, what I don't like about it, of course, is it's a pot which I think is super unhygienic. Um, but I absolutely love the cream. If I'm honest, I absolutely love the smell, which is a gorgeous citrus smell. But it's also absolutely the right texture for me as a night cream. Um, very comforting and moisturising, but sinks into the skin quite easily. So I I do like it. I just wish they'd do it in a tube so it was a bit more hygienic but what can what can you do um so those two I don't think I've ever spoken about before I should give an honorable mention whilst we're in the creams to uh the hand cream which I spoke about in my pandemic hand cream video I just recently got it at that point it was the Nursum caring hand cream and uh I absolutely love this. It's a really, really nice hand cream, uh, a barrier cream. It is a bit sticky, but I think that's what you need. It's really transformed the mess that my hands were a, a couple of months ago uh, with all this hand washing and um, harsh antibacterial gels and so forth. And it's quite reasonably priced and it smells great. Uh, it's even got a bit of SPF in it, which um, is unusual for hand creams. I can't recommend it highly enough. I think you can get it from Boots. Um, another item that I have spoken about with my initial impressions of the Chanel Sublimage Lessons de Teint, so their, their treatment foundation, their, I think it's their most expensive, well, yeah, it is their most expensive foundation, which I got at the same time as Les Beige. And I think when I first reviewed them, I didn't see that much difference between this and Les Beige. I think in terms of coverage, that's still the case. But this is a beautiful foundation. And it's kind of my foundation of choice when I know I'm going to be on screen because it gives me enough coverage. But it definitely feels gorgeous on the skin. It goes on. Uh, it doesn't sink into my pores. It's not um, it's not heavyweight coverage. What do I mean by that? Um, that's the wrong word. Not full coverage, although it is buildable. But if you've got reasonable skin, it's very decent coverage in evening out tone, which is what I need. Um, can we justify the price? I do think it feels nicer to me than Lay Beige, which is about half the price. And as I told you at the time, it does come with its own foundation brush, which is a really nice brush, actually. I've come to really appreciate it and use it even with other foundations. What I like is that little kind of pointy dome bit, which is great round the chin and nose, but it's a nice firm brush, which I kind of need to, to drive in the product. So, um, and it you can see now I've had it a few months, I've washed it quite a lot and it's holding up pretty well so it is a really nice foundation brush um, which you can kind of factor in with the price. In oh I should mention 
another foundation product, which I think I probably introduced at some stage. This is Trini London. And um, this wasn't one of the initial foundation products. It's called the BFF Serum Distress. So again, it's a kind of serum foundation BB cream. Um, it's nothing like as good as the sublimage. It's a lot cheaper. But on days when you just want um, a little bit of coverage uh, and treatment, as it were, and you're perhaps not going to be um, in high definition on screen, this is a really nice product. I like that it's a nice hygienic pump action. Um, I will say for a serum, it isn't terribly sticky. It feels relatively dry going on, but it does give, give decent coverage and it looks good on me. So um, that may be worth exploring. In terms of makeup products, I don't think I ever spoke about this little NARS pencil. And I'm afraid I don't think you can get it currently um, because it was part of an Erdem specific release. And I bought it and I just never seemed to use it until recently. I've been getting, I've always had, but it's worse now, the kind of darkness at the inner corner by the bridge of my nose of both eyes, um, a lot of people, that kind of shadowy look there that you get when you're older. And uh, I tend to use a cream or white eyeshadow just kind of tucked into there, perks up the eye. But I find that this does the job best and lasts all day and is exactly um, the right colour for me because there's a bit of kind of pink lavender in it. I mean, that looks very glaring. It doesn't look like that um, when it takes out the shadow in your eyes. So I don't know what to say to you about getting this. I'm not sure whether perhaps NARS does a similar one, not in the um, collaboration range, but definitely worth looking if you have the same problem for not just a plain white or cream, which is what I've done previously, but one that's a little bit pearlescent um, with effectively some colour correction. Um, it's working very well for me and I'm using that every day. Another lip product that I've been enjoying, enjoying a lot recently is this Pat McGrath and what's it called? My eyesight. Astral Gold. It's part of the Star Wars. <laughs> there you go. I'm the only person in the world who's never watched a single Star Wars movie. I'm roughly aware of some of the characters, but it's never appealed to me. But I got the lipstick and it was just a colourless one. Uh, with some glitter in it but um, on my lips it gives a kind of gold sheen without being too in your face and uh, it doesn't feel gritty which a lot of these glittery lipsticks do so when I've done um, a moderate smoky eye recently which I have been doing with my Chanel Fall products in particular um, I like to wear that to balance out the look. Um, separate video for the Chanel Fall products, but I have been enjoying this one of the four Chanel nail varnishes. Just to say, really, I think this is the first kind of grungy um, grey beige that Chanel's done for a few years. It made me think of Particular, which is quite a popular one, um, but some years old now, I don't know if it's still in the range, which is a bit warmer and a, a slightly more caramelly beige than this, but um, definitely in the same ballpark as uh, a neutral. Uh, it's really pretty on the nails, I think, despite it being um, quite a boring looking colour. And uh, I've had this on a couple of times already uh, and really enjoying it. I think it's work appropriate just about. And the other... Um, newish purchase that I'll mention, not to say that I'm not enjoying other items from the Birds of a Feather collection. I haven't really had enough chance to play with the eyeshadow palette, for example. This is the blush. So this is the nude glide blush that I got. And it's really lovely. Um, You can see, remember when I showed it, that... Um, 
it looks as if it's got some kind of gold flecks in it. They don't show up terribly, but it's a really, really pretty colour. And it's a lot more pigmented than I thought it was going to be. And then it appeared on a kind of finger swatch. The first time I applied it and I just dipped in my MAC um, angled cheek brush and didn't kind of tap it off um, because I thought it was not a particularly densely pigmented um, uh, blush. Uh, I It looked completely overdone. I had to kind of... Um, blot it out a bit uh, so I haven't made that mistake again uh, I do shake off the brush uh, and it's a really really nice um, mid-toned for pale skinned um, powder blush so having kind of vowed to give up on powder blushes and use liquid or cream from now on in the interests of not showing up the drying skin this one looks really peachy pretty and uh, I'm definitely enjoying it with all the different eye looks. I think it would suit a lot of people, um, probably not the darker skin tones, but um, many, many other Northern Europeans will look good in this particular shade. And it, it lasts quite well as well for a um, powder blush. So there we go. Um, those are a few favourites from um, this last month or so. I'd be interested to know if you've picked anything up in the last few weeks or months that is a star for you. Uh, let me know in the comments. If you've got to the end of this video, a thumbs up is always much appreciated. And until we speak again, uh, take care of yourselves, keep safe and bye for now.